wait, before we jump straight into that, I want to explain a little bit about why I'm doing this. From the very first time that condensed resin became a thing, uh, I've been curious. Is it really the same as just doing two runs, but in one run's time? If that's the case, why don't people just use condensed resin? I mean, there is a bit of an inconvenience factor there being only able to hold three at a time. And of course, if you just enjoy spamming dungeons, then of course that is a reason to not use condensed resin as well. And just from using condensed resin, it became pretty obvious that it does seem like it's two runs. I'm really just talking about artifact dungeons here, but at AR45 you are guaranteed a five star. And uh, when you're using condensed resin, you're guaranteed two five stars. Um, but there was something I noticed. With AR-45, you do have a small chance to get two five stars as well. Is there a chance to get three five stars with condensed resin? Yes, there is. So that should kind of close the case right there, but I was also thinking about, you know, three and four stars. They're important too, if not just for fodder to increase your five stars. So I carried out a test. I did 20 condensed resin runs and 40 normal runs. Granted, I did a few more condensed resin runs and a lot more of the non-condensed resin runs, but just to keep it nice and sort of simple, I think it's a big enough sample size to get a very good idea if you do get the same three, four, and five stars or not. How I went about collecting this data is pretty barbaric, but uh, bear with me. So basically just while playing normally, at the end of all my artifact runs, I take a screenshot. And in this case, I did that 60 times. And long story short, I'd comb through all the images and count up the amount of artifacts I got. It was pretty obvious when there was a condensed resin run because there'd be a lot more artifacts on the ground. There were some cases where it was very hard to count them, like in this screenshot here. If you look at the topmost four star artifact drop, the purple one there, you can kind of see two lines pointing up, um, but you know, you can never be super sure if that's just like a graphical thing, maybe that one's just thicker for whatever reason, but artifacts also have a line coming out from the bottom of them. And if you look really closely, you can definitely see two distinct lines there as well. Since the shining of the lights on the bottom are much, much thinner and much, much more like precise, uh, I can say with a lot more confidence that there are indeed two four star artifacts there instead of just one because the thick line coming up, it's kind of all swirly. You can see on some of them and who knows if it just kind of like breaks off there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I was pretty meticulous and pretty careful about how I counted them. Uh, however, if you very much want to, you can go frame by frame and make sure my math is correct. I don't really recommend it. That's probably going to be very annoying for you, but the option is there. So what you're about to witness is a little 30 second montage. I tried to make it musical again, but nothing massively fancy because it was already taking forever to put together. Uh, mainly the meticulous counting, honestly, and then adding all the numbers together. That was a lot of work, but hopefully you get a kick out of it anyway. And then we'll discuss the results after that. We can go through some of the five stars that I have acquired. And yeah, it'll be a jolly good time. So. Without further ado, here we go! So yeah, there was that. With the 20 condensed resin runs, the only difference is one extra three star and two extra five stars. The one extra three star isn't really important anyway, but the two extra five stars are also just coincidence. Like I said, I have way more than 40 screenshots at AR45 dungeons. However, I only had, I think, 23 condensed resin runs. So I, you know, I wanted to make it, of course, double because condensed resin costs twice as much per run. And there have been several times where I got double five star drops, not just the one shown here. And these 40 images were picked more or less at random, you know, just make everything as like even and fair as possible. So I am very surprised that the three and four stars were as close as they are though, to be honest. Cause like, even if it is the same as just running twice with one run with condensed resin, it's like, there is still some element of RNG in there. You're not like guaranteed, you know, two three stars and two four stars and a five star for a non-condensed resin run and vice versa. So these are closer to the kind of results I would have expected from a much larger sample size, but hey, it gets the point across and there you have it. So if you're a pretty busy person or just need to like study for an exam or whatever and you don't have that much time to play, there's no shame or less efficiency in using condensed resin. And of course, if you just don't like running the artifact dungeons that much, of course, you can also use condensed resin. 
I prefer it for the more annoying dungeons where I can't use the characters I want to use because they're just not that great there and it takes forever. And yeah, there I'll stock up on those three condensed resins and, and yeah, maybe even after those three I'll go back to the blacksmith and craft three more. Condensed resin is also very useful just so you can store a bit of your resin as well. So if you can only log in for a few minutes before going to work or whatever, Boom, make some condensed resin and you're good to go. Can use it later then. But yeah, that actually equates to around 80 runs. Again, we've done a lot more than that. You can see our artifacts here. We have a pretty decent selection of them, but do we have any good ones? No, we don't. Okay, well, we have some, <laughs> we have some decent ones, but not really any good ones. Let's take a look at these new ones here first, I guess. These are ones apparently I haven't checked. Two flat subs here on the hourglass. It automatically makes it meh. Although in most cases, attack percent is what you want on the hourglass. So, and then the 1% is defense. So it's pretty bad, honestly. Def HP def. We have pyro damage bonus here on the goblet with elemental mastery. It's really not that great. Attack percent royal mask. I typically prefer crit rate or crit damage just for the general damage dealer. But I think some heroes can use attack on circlet as well. Uh, the subs, you know, we basically just have crit damage there. It's not that great. Here we have a royal plume, crit rate, attack. Eh. On one hand, like, it, it looks fine, but on the other hand, you have to realize that with plumes and flowers, their main stat is always flat, and it takes one of those bad flat stats out of the substat equation. So plumes and flowers are by far the easiest to get good substats on, you know? So it's like, even though crit rate and attack are nice, it's still not that great because there's still flat HP there and it doesn't have four substats. I mean, I would definitely raise it if I really needed a, uh, a oblige plume, but just know that because of how much easier it is to get good plumes and flowers, that even though it looks good, like if, if it would be on like Sands of Eon, you know, with a good main stat and it had those subs, that would be a very, very nice Sands because the chance to get it is so much lower. Here we have another plume. We have attack, elemental mastery. It's kind of the same story, two decent subs, one, undesired sub for most characters. Uh, here we have Animo Damage Bonus. Oh, <laughs> with the three flat subs. Awesome. We also have a Geo Damage Bonus here with, uh, I mean, Ellen's Mastery is always flat, but then we have flat attack and defense, so also quite awesome. What else we got in here? We have a uh, Troops Dawn Light, attack, crit damage, HP. Again, you know, two good stats, and then HP percent is going to be better than, well, I can't have flat HP, so... It's better than like flat defense, I guess. Here we have a Bard's Arrow Feather. I have such good luck with Bard's Arrow Feather. This one, you know, Energy Recharge element, Elemental Mastery, typically pretty good substats for anyone who's gonna want this. That increases their Elemental Mastery further. And you know, it's uh, for Bow and Catalyst users though. I'm not sure how many uh, characters want the four piece set here, but I digress. Here we have a five star Gladiator Hourglass with HP percent. Automatically kind of makes it meh for now. And it's just four stars besides that. And I generally don't care about going over those too much. But yeah, we can take a look at the ones I've raised out of all the ones I've gotten, those are generally going to be the best ones. Some of these did come from AR40, but I would say the bulk majority did come from AR45 farming. And most of them are still not that great. It's just what I had at the time. This is a pre-AR45 one here. You can see a lot of flat HP, a lot of flat attack, <laughs> but I wanted a five star crit damage. This is one I did get somewhat recently. We have 18.7 crit damage, way too much defense, but whatever, 42 element mastery. It's not, it's not, it's not horrible. This one is currently on Shanling. I gave it to her because I recently changed my Kaching set. She is half gladiator, half thundering fury now. So I kind of figured <laughs> may as well give that to someone. Uh, it's a very, very good flower, you know, almost 15 crit rate, 50 elemental mastery, five crit damage. It's almost perfect. I would say. And then here we have uh, Bard Zero Feather for Venti here. He actually does not have the set here. It's just, this is the off piece for whatever reason right now. Pretty decent as well, 70 element of mastery, 8.7 attack, 11 crit rate, you know. Here we have a Gladiator's Nostalgia, 14 attack, 11 energy recharge, solid, solid. Plume of Death, sort of the same story. My Shanling has 40% electro resistance, whatever. It has good subs, <laughs> 8.2 crit rate, 16 energy recharge. Uh, and then, yeah, I think a lot of Barbara's is just trying to focus on flat HP and then HP percent. I just really want to turn as much HP as possible. Uh, this one is currently equipped on no one because I decided to go crit damage for my Kaching once I got her the Black Sword. So, um, yeah, it turned out pretty good, honestly. 14.6 attack, almost 8 crit rate, 6 energy recharge, pretty good helmet. Uh, this one was not that great. It does have a lot of energy recharge, but also, you know, a little bit of attack, but then, yeah, some flat stuff. But regardless, when you get a 5-star crit rate, you have to kind of look past the substats a bit because... 
it's just that sort of situation where there's a lot of main stats there and you kind of have to be happy if you just get the main stat. This plume is also decent, 12.4 crit rate, 5 attack. Then we have this attack goblet, which I sometimes switch out with this physical damage goblet, depending on what I'm doing. Like if uh, electro damage is not viable in a place and I still want to bring Kajing, then I'm just going to throw on the physical damage bonus, which surprisingly has all right substats, but you know, it's that situation again. Physical damage, you know, it's just hard to get this, the right damage you want regardless if it's the off piece. And then this one, you know, almost 20 energy recharge, so she gets her ult pretty fast, so it's not bad. <laughs> we also have a crit rate on Vinti. I think I've gone over a lot of these already, so I'm gonna try and be a little bit quicker here. And we have the uh, Barber set here, mostly just trying to focus on HP. I think this was the Oblige Flower I got for uh, collecting all Geoculus, and it didn't turn out very well. Attack, death, HP, you know, flat attack. Uh, and yeah, I guess the rest of these are pretty me mediocre, so. That's what you can expect from, I have no idea how many runs this is. I could count my five stars and say it's at least that many because you only get like one out of three at before AR45. But yeah, I guess that'll pretty much do it. I think this is my third installment of uh, YouTuber with way too much time on his hands builds a strange music song out of Michael Rosen's click uh, <laughs> and, and does an artifact review at the end. That's kind of a way too long title though, so we're just going to... Name it something a little bit more conventional. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Dropping a like on this video if you haven't do enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.